Hello, welcome to Awakening with Soul Spirational. My name is Tishni Zwicky. I'm Barb Costello. Thank you so much for joining us on our first episode. Mm -hmm. We are really excited um, to, to share today what our vision is uh, for these upcoming episodes. Uh, different information in the spiritual realm, hence the awakening part of with Soul Spirational. Um, when we talk about awakening, we are talking about um, really getting into connection with your true higher self and um, becoming more aware of who you are, not just as a human being, but as a spiritual being. And um, in fact, you may have heard that, um, um, that saying that we are spiritual beings experiencing a human existence. So this is really bringing the spiritual aspect into our physical realm. And um, so the shows that we're bringing to you are going to be um, how to bring conscious awareness into your mind, your body, your soul. So, you know, maybe, you know, paying attention to the thoughts that kind of run through our minds. And it's really interesting to see that oftentimes the thoughts that are running through our minds aren't even ours. So really paying attention to the thoughts and also to our own subtle energy. So when we meet with somebody, what is our reaction physically? You know, we experience somebody that we really enjoy, we really, um, just right off the bat, we have these good feelings. We can really feel into our own subtle body to see, am I feeling it in my heart center? Um, can I feel the joy behind my face even? And um, so, and, and likewise, if you meet somebody that it feels as though for whatever reason that um, maybe you don't get a good feeling from them, or maybe it's somebody that you know and you just don't particularly care much for, when we start paying attention to our own subtle body, we can find out where we're holding that particular stress. Maybe it's an anxiety when that person, we think of the person or we see that person or a situation that happens to come up. So it's really um, awakening to your true higher self, to your physical body, but to the spiritual that runs through it. So we are gonna talk about the shows that we are going to bring you um, on Awakening with Soul Spirational. Mm -hmm. One of those we're gonna bring is gonna be about Reiki. And some of you may already be aware of what Reiki is. In fact, some of you may even be practitioners, whether you practice at home for yourself or your pets, or whether you are a professional and you're charging for your services. We are going to discuss what Reiki is in, in future shows, what the benefits are. We are gonna talk about how Reiki can really help you with your spiritual awakening. Um, the subtleties, the nuances of Reiki. It is more than just an energy art form. It can really um, awaken you to your psychic senses, to your spiritual self, getting in contact with your higher self. And um, so we're really excited to bring that. And in fact, for those of whom out there are watching that are Reiki practitioners, there will be some episodes where I'm gonna be sharing different techniques, um, either that I've learned or that I've developed myself, that you can use at home uh, for yourself or even for your own clients. We really are here today and in these shows to bring you our experiences, mm -hmm. um, to share with you information and knowledge that we have gleaned over our decades <laughs> um, of experience. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so Reiki is one of the, the subjects. Um, and you know what, let me say too, even if you aren't a Reiki practitioner, you can still watch these shows because you know Reiki is universal life force energy. It runs through every single one of us, everything. So we are working with that energy. Even though you may not be attuned to Reiki or be taught how to use Reiki, um, you may find that those episodes, you can still get information of how you can use your own energy for your own healing for your own benefit and now that i've said the word healing let me put a caveat here this is a spiritual show so we are not here to treat diagnose prevent cure any illness or disease we are simply here to share our spiritual experiences um, with you mm -hmm. so if there is a seed that we can plant 
if there is a little nugget of information that you can pull for one, from one or many of our shows um, to help you on your awakening, then we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, it really is our way to give back to you, to the viewer. You know, we recognize that some people haven't started their spiritual awakening yet. Um, some people may be new into their awakening and they're unsure of how to move forward. They're unsure of what steps should they take next. Others we recognize um, have been on their journey for maybe years or even decades. Maybe you feel stuck or that you've plateaued. We are hoping that through these shows that we can help progress you um, to, to move you forward on your journey, to give you a little more um, insight and clarity for the path that you're walking. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Barb because one of the other things we're going to be discussing in future episodes is past life recall or past life regression. And Barb is our in-house past life regressionist. Thank you, Tish. You're welcome. Uh, Tish was explaining some of the many tools that are out there in helping to you to go inward and explore your own journey, your own go, uh, proceed on your own spiritual path. And I just want to reiterate that we honor everyone for being on their own individual spiritual journey. We never judge anybody for where they are. My own expertise is in past life regression. It's simply one of those tools. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of mystique surrounding it, a lot of fear surrounding recalling your past lives, which I really hope to address in the episode that we're going to focus on about past life regression in a couple of episodes down the road. Uh, a lot of people are really afraid uh, of recalling their past lives, afraid they might go back to something traumatic some, and uh, bring those forces back and not be able to, to deal with them. But really, past life regression is all about exploring your own psyche, about finding, understanding some of the forces that may be mysterious to you. Like, why do, for instance, I meet one person and, I'm, and I love them, I feel a simpatico, I just feel like I've known them all my life, like Tish here. And why are there other people that I just don't like? I don't know why I don't like them, there's nothing overt <laughs> about it. Oftentimes that is because of a past life connection and just bringing those forward helps you to deal with it, understand it and move through it and work with it. Um, other things are simply fears. For instance, in my early past, in my early this life, I had a fear of barns, which I could not explain for the life of me. But I went back to this life. It, it was fairly easy to recall, a very fairly simple explanation. But just understanding that took that fear away. So what I hope to well, do... You found that in a past life of what the fear of the barn was? Yes, yes. Uh, but what I hope to bring to you through this uh, series of, uh, when we talk about past lives, that is, is, as one of these tools, is just to dispel that fear and help you understand what past life regression really can do for you, take you through the process so you have an understanding of it, of what you will feel like as you're going through it. Some of the things that you might encounter, um, how it can help you, how it won't help you in this lifetime, and, uh, just generally give you a better understanding of it so there's not so much fear and, and find out if it's the right thing for you to pursue and try to understand. And it's interesting because, you know, there are some people that um, they think about past lives and they're unsure, uncertain, and even a level of fear that goes along with that. But then the more you open yourself up, like most things in life, you find that it really isn't a scary thing at all. And in fact, I, I've been fortunate enough to have um, worked with Barb on some of my own past lives and it was absolutely fascinating. So, um, so yes, and I think even what we're talking about here today, we're talking in the spiritual realm and there's so many different things in the spiritual realm that people are a bit fearful of or um, the uncertainty. 
uh, maybe they really weren't brought up with some of the subjects that we're talking about or uh, maybe they were brought up with a sense of fear around them. And we are hoping mm -hmm. to dispel mm -hmm. some of those, um, such as psychic development. There is this, this woo-woo around psychics. Um, and I really mm -hmm. find it quite amazing that I believe that, that every single one of us were born with psychic senses. I recently had a client ask me, you know, when did you realize that you had these gifts? And I think most of us, when we look back, we can point to different um, times in our lives where, you know, as a young child or into our teenage years where we saw something, we felt something, we instinctively knew something. Um, and when we have, if we've shared that, there are some people that'll say, you really didn't hear that. Um, you really didn't experience that. You're imagining things. And the unfortunate side of that is then we start to lose trust for ourselves. Maybe I really didn't experience what I experienced. I am here to say mm -hmm. that we are all born with these abilities. Um, just like our physical senses, my eyesight may be better than Barb's, but her hearing may be stronger than mine. It's the mm -hmm. same with our psychic senses. And once we decide to own our abilities and really work with them, um, we can strengthen them. And I, I feel like it is our gift from God or a mm -hmm. gift from source. So as we are spiritual beings, experiencing this physical lifetime, those are gifts that we've been given just to help us um, travel our path a little easier with a little bit more insight, a little more clarity as we're moving forward. Another thing that I'm hoping the darkness to dispel, um, tarot. There is such a darkness for so many people around doing tarot or oracle cards. We are going to talk about first the difference between tarot and oracle, but we are going to take that darkness off around it. Anything in life can be construed as dark if we choose for it to be. With tarot, I see them simply as, um, as a, it's just another, I call it tarot for the soul. It is a tool, it is a validation for our psychic senses. So maybe we aren't ready to see things yet. Maybe we aren't ready to, to really feel things um, yet. So we can look at tarot cards, we can turn tarot cards over and really feel into the symbology of those cards to really gain insight. And, you know, I actually want to take this moment here and talk that this is, this show, what we do, Awakening with Soul Inspiration, Awakening, it is about bringing you inward to that divine light within you so you can feel its warmth, so you can shine your light onto the world. And when we go inward and we can see that and feel that light, um, truly amazing things can and do happen. Um, kind of, you know, some people have come in saying, I feel broken, fix me. I'm less than whole. Um, what's wrong with me? And I can assure you, with the work that I have done, every person that I have worked with, they have the same beautiful divine light running through them. The difference? are our human experiences. Mm -hmm. We experience different things, whether it's through past life issues that are coming forward today, um, this particular lifetime, things that come up for our, our own learning. But those experiences just kind of cloudy our light. So we may not see it, we may not feel it, but in these shows, we are bringing you inward. So when you meditate, we're bringing you inward. If we're doing a prayer, it's bringing you inward to that God space, that spirit within you, um, and to help release some of that, um, that human experience that may have clouded your, your light. Um, so to get back to tarot, um, we've been running some, some tarot classes, and Barb is relatively new at, at tarot and reading them. So I just thought I would ask, how does it feel for you now that you've been working with tarot? 
I was really surprised when I first started doing it. I just did it, oh, this sounds like another interesting thing to do because Tish teaches a lot of really interesting ways of going inward. I didn't really think that it was going to be a tool to go inward, but it really is, very surprisingly. And I picked it up rather quickly. It's not a matter of learning the symbology. What I found was it's a matter of learning to trust your own inner instincts. And what you see in those cards is what's coming from inside of you, uh, from source, mm -hmm. from your creator, whatever your perception of God, the universe is. It's uh, just learning to trust that is a way of opening up your own self to who you really are and your own path. And I was really surprised to find out that tarot is another tool to understanding yourself and opening yourself up to your own psychic abilities, which really surprised me. <laughs> it was fascinating. It's a beautiful thing because when you can look at symbology on a card and instead of going through the booklet mm -hmm. and really, if you were to just you know keep the booklet to the side and look at the symbology, what does that red robe for existence feel like for you? You're just allowing yourself to tap into your own psychic abilities to feel into that card. And this card may mean something to you today, but if you do a reading in six months from now, that same card may mean something entirely different because it's where mm -hmm. your energy is um, at that time as you're pulling through psychic senses. So I'm really excited for when we get to those um, shows as well. And I just want to say one more thing sure. about the tarot is that once you do start trusting yourself, that's a major thing. It's huge. Most people don't trust their inner intuition. Then it starts just flowing like crazy and you realize, wow, how much, how, how much it, it is inside yourself and it flows just so much more. But it's that trust that you, people need to develop and learn. And you know, I think that's an important point because trust is something that um, I would argue that a lot of us have issues with self-trust for mm. so many different reasons. And um, when we go through things of this nature, the spiritual nature, we really start to, to build up our own self-trust, our own self-love. Um, instead of calling your best friend every time you want to make a decision, you learn to start trusting your own instincts, your own insight that you know what, this time I'm just gonna make the decision on my own and I'm gonna see what happens. And, um, and it's just a beautiful thing to really, to come from a place where you, you doubt yourself about so many different things and to be able to say I trust myself in making this decision and to really stand firm behind mm -hmm. those choices. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. We are also gonna be talking about things, um, there's this one that's my favorite and it's called Bring It On where we just kind of feel into our own body. Maybe we've been working on manifesting something. You work with a law of attraction, perhaps. But that which you've been manifesting hasn't come to you yet. So we work on feeling where that blockage is. We release it. We surrender it. And the beautiful thing is when our hands are up um, in that surrender, that let go position, we have released. Mm -hmm. And now our hands and our arms our body is open wide to receive that which we have been asking for, that which we have been manifesting. So we, we let go to create space to bring that energy um, to us if it is in our highest, greatest good. We are also going to be sharing different meditations with you. And in fact, um, the next episode is gonna be a standard connecting and grounding meditation. There are going to be some shows where I may refer you back to episode two. So for those of you who are watching at home on your laptop or your tablet, um, some of these techniques, it really is best to be in meditation first. So this way you can go back, watch that, get connected and grounded and centered so you can get the best benefit from particular ex exercises that we do. Um, and, and just different techniques like the bring it on, just bringing that awareness to people. So I'm really excited um, for the different shows that are coming your way that we're gonna be able to bring to you. Again, it's just our way of sharing our experience. Um, and just this last couple of minutes, 
we aren't just two spiritual women up here talking, so we are that too. Mm -hmm. um, we also, we do have credentials. So just since it is our first show, I thought maybe we could share that now with you. And then that way you can always go back and see this if you choose. But um, I have been on my journey for 19, nearly 20 years. And I started early on working with chakras, another thing we're going to be discussing, with the seven energy centers, the, the seven main energy centers. That eventually led me into learning and taking the courses to become a Reiki master teacher. So I am certified as a Reiki master teacher. I also am licensed as a spiritual minister to help people with what we're doing, um, to bring them forward, to really actually to go inside to feel that divine space within them. And I'm also a metaphysical teacher, helping people in meditation. And th these nearly 20 years have brought me a lot of insight, a lot of tools, a lot of information that I can't wait to share with you. So with mm -hmm. that, I'll turn it over, Barb, so you can share. Well, just briefly, I've been on my spiritual path for probably about 40 years. Uh, most of it has involved past life regression. I learned past life regression from my stepfather who pioneered a method in the 1950s, one of the very early pioneers in past life regression. So this has been going on a very long time. Uh, but I have been personally recalling past lives for about 35 years. I've recalled about 50 of my own. And I have been certified as a past life regressionist for the past 30 years or so. I'm also a Reiki II practitioner. I'm a registered nurse. And I have a lot of other credentials that don't really apply to spirituality, but uh, <laughs> I, I just like to keep learning and growing and practicing everything. But we come to you with our experience, what we've put into practice ourselves for a number of years. And Tish and I work so well together. We spark so many ideas, so many new things together. We've figured out a way to combine Reiki and past life regression together that results in a wonderful tool for not just bringing past life forces to the forefront, but also healing them through Reiki. It's a powerful healing tool that we'd like to share with you too. So we're really excited about everything that we are going to bring to you. It's so exciting. Um, also, before we go, I want to kind of touch on what Barb had said earlier. It is so important to us that everybody knows that we do honor you for who and where you are today, regardless of what your past has been or your perceived mistakes, regardless of what your future stumbles may be, we honor you for who and where you are today. If there's one thing that we hope that we can convey to you is that we come to you truly through love, compassion, understanding, kindness, we are here to help support you. Though we may never meet you, um, we hope that you can, can feel the love um, and the comfort that we are sending to you because you are not alone. There are many of us that are just awakening or have been on this road um, for quite a while. And it's just it's comforting knowing that there are other people out there that understand, that are there to help lift and support you. Um, so with that, we want to say thank you. If you have any questions, you can email us. Um, you can go to our website or call us. We are here to help in any way that we can um, in the spiritual realm. So once again, thanks for joining us on our first episode. We are so grateful for you tuning in. And uh, Barb, thank you for being here. Thank with you, me today. Tish. I really appreciate you. Um, so until next time, thank you, be well, and namaste.